today. Welcome to this uh, webinar about Audencia Business School. I'm going to go quickly through the slides and then perhaps we'll also have time uh, for the questions and answer at the end um, of this uh, presentation. So Audencia Business School. Audencia is based in the city of Nantes in France, uh, which is northwest of France. Uh, we're more than 100 years old, um, Audencia meaning uh, listening and daring, and that speaks true for our motto, never stop daring. Um, Audencia indeed is a, is a very innovative environment to study in. So Audencia is known for its excellence. We're triple accredited, Equis, ACSB and AMBA. Those are the three main international accreditations in the business school world, and we are accredited by all three major international accreditation bodies. We're also part of something called the Grand École system in France. The Grand École is known as the elite of business schools in France, the Ivy League of, of schools in France, I'd say. Highly ranked also internationally, the Financial Times ranks us uh, 46 in Europe for business schools. And we have programs like the Management Engineering that's ranked 15 for career services, for example. Um, so whether internationally or nationally, we are well known and your degree uh, if you were to come to study at Audencia, will be recognized across the globe. Audencia is a dedicated business school, um, so we have about 5,300 students. Uh, you're very much in, in, a, in, a, in a very specialized environment um, with 190 plus um, uh, partners across the globe, and a lot of our programs have exchange opportunities within them. About 35% international students on campus, so you would be in an environment where you hear English as the main language here on campus, but also uh, many other languages. Uh, faculty members uh, are about 58 uh, faculty members, um, 58 nationalities represented amongst our faculty members, and that really also showcases the diversity here on campus. <coughs> We have uh, campuses mainly in the city of Nantes, so four campuses in the city of Nantes, but also in China. And something that I guess uh, we'd like to put through in terms of Audencia is this commitment to corporate social responsibility. So here on campus, you're learning not only how to do business, but also how to consider the environment and uh, the society at the same time. Um, so yes, CSR is something that's integrated into all programs across the board at Audencia, whether you're doing finance, marketing, um, you are going to learn how to be responsible and sustainable in the way you work. More about the city of Nantes, because most of our programs are based in Nantes. Nantes is a very vibrant city here in the northwest of France, about two hours on the train from Paris, uh, but also it's a great destination to zoom off to other areas in Europe. Um, you know, now we're from London, an hour and a half from Amsterdam, Madrid, two hours from Berlin. Um, so it's also the opportunity on your Schengen visa studying here at, at, in France to discover the world uh, and discover Europe. A very student city. Uh, so yes, you'd be in a very student environment with Paris um, not too far and the Atlantic Coast not too far. So you could also spend your weekends at the sea, at the beach, if that's what you like. Nantes um, is known for welcoming uh, internationals, second most welcoming French city for expats. I quite like that statistic, being an expat myself. And the main industries uh, in Nantes are agriculture, agribusiness, and we'll talk a bit more about that with Corinne Labor here beside me, who's program director for the Food and Agribusiness Management Program. Um, other prominent industries are the aeronautics, marine renewable energy, the digital sector, the cultural industries. They all very much booming here in the city of Nantes. And another thing to, I guess, note about Nantes is that we have the chance of it not being, you know, as expensive as the capital. So it's a very um, affordable uh, city to uh, also study. Very green city with a great transport system. Um, we have four campuses and you most likely be in the main campus, but if you ever have to get around, it's very easy to do so on our very efficient transport system. Nantes was voted green capital uh, in Europe in 2013. 
seen and you know I think you really find that true if you are, were to come on, on campus and come to Milt here. And you know I guess a master's program is in order to excel your career and um, you know to be able to kind of um, apply for more uh, executive management roles and really um, you know excel in terms of uh, your career objectives and we know that here on campus and we do focus a lot on that during your program and beyond um, and you know 93 percent find a job within two months of graduation that just goes to show the service that is available to you when you are here on campus um, and we have a dedicated jobs board only for Nancy students and we have 15,000 job offers from businesses every year on that platform looking to hire our 5,300 students. So There's a lot of opportunities for our students um, and, and a great service there available to you. We organize also a dedicated careers fair once a year where more than 100 multinationals come on campus to recruit and they're not only looking to recruit for the French office but for offices across the globe. Um, we also have 25,000 alumni across the globe and our job is also to link you up with those alumni do what you want to do in the countries you want to do it in, in the sectors you want to do it in. And that service is indeed available to you here at our The logo of some of our corporate partners across the, the globe and this is just uh, a glimpse and it doesn't include everybody. And we have a very dynamic uh, campus here in Nantes with all the necessary facilities and the great sports and societies uh, culture here on campus. So whether it's, um, you know, cooking, whether it's basketball, whether it's sailing, um, whatever you're interested in, I'm sure you find the club here on campus uh, to suit uh, your So I guess you guys are interested in our uh, uh, master's programs and these are the list of master's programs we have here on campus. Today we'll be zooming in a bit on the European and International Business Management program because I know there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, Spanish speaking participants here with us today and, and perhaps they'd be interested in that program and also we'll be zooming in on the food and agribusiness management program. But just to go quickly through the International Master's Management program, an English school program, one of our most popular programs um, with a Mandarin internship and one of the most diverse programs on campus with 20 plus nationalities. An opportunity to study abroad during the summer semester, either in Boston University, Berkeley, London School of Economics or the University of Lisbon. So international math and management, let me know whether you have any questions on that and I can tell you a bit more at the end. Moving on swiftly to the Master in Management program, which is uh, the flagship program here within Golden Health Schools in France. Um, again, let me know if you're interested in that and we can talk about it more at the end. So moving on swiftly, uh, Management Engineering, which is a very interesting program. If there are any engineers um, participating today, this might be the program for you. Basically, as an engineer in any sector of engineering, we have to design a dedicated management program that allows you to kind of leave up where you left off in terms of engineering and acquire complementary studies in management. So we know you've never done management before and the program is tailor-made for you to allow you to kind of uh, acquire complementary skills in management. So you can work in an engineering company, but on business development and executive management, not necessarily on um, the technical engineering roles. This program ranks 39th in the world by the financial world. The IBM program, European International Business Program, is a trilingual program. So if you speak French, English and Spanish, this might be an interesting program for you. It allows you to spend uh, a year in three uh, European uh, cities uh, and in, in three European institutions and acquire uh, the network that is linked to all three uh, institutions. So okay, let me know if you're interested in this program at the end of this uh, presentation. MSCPM program, Supply Chain and Purchasing Management, very specialized program. Um, again, I hope there is some interest in this program at the end. We'll talk a bit more about the Food and Agribusiness Management program, which is one of our double degrees here at Odentia, and I'll leave the floor to the program director, Corinne Lamour. 
Hi everyone, um, I'm very happy to be with you all um, this afternoon. Um, so my name is Corinne Lamo. I own a PhD in, uh, in marketing and I work for the food and uh, agribusiness um, uh, industry for 18 years before joining uh, Audencia uh, some years ago. And I'm managing uh, this um, Master of Science uh, in Food and Agribusiness uh, Management. Um, actually, the, the, the main uh, uh, advantages of this master is that uh, it um, offers a double degree um, um, in food and agribusiness, so a Master of Science plus uh, an MBA that uh, will be delivered uh, by our Brazilian partner uh, in Sao Paulo, where you will spend uh, two months um, there. Um, the other um, uh, advantage, I would say, a uh, value that uh, the MSc um, uh, in food and agribusiness management offers is that uh, the high diversity, um, both in terms of uh, nationality and origin of the students, and also in terms of the, uh, professional background. Actually, we have um, students uh, coming from uh, um, the, the engineering or food uh, and agriculture engineering um, background and we also have um, students coming from uh, social sciences so it's a really um, interesting um, um, mix of um, backgrounds cultural backgrounds and um, uh, professional backgrounds or academic backgrounds um, actually we have students also coming from all over the world from um, south america north america africa nigeria uh, ivory coast um, but also from asia uh, this year we have the indian uh, students and chinese uh, students um, last year we have students from malaysia taiwan and but we also have european students uh, french students netherlands um, eastern countries um, uh, so it's, it's really a rich group uh, with high diversity. Um, it's totally taught, um, taught in, in English, obviously, uh, but we also have um, classes of Portuguese before, before students go to, um, to Brazil. They have like 24 hours of Portuguese, so it's a nice opportunity for you to learn uh, um, the Portuguese language. Um, and the other plus uh, of this uh, master, I guess, is the practical side of it. Um, myself, coming from the industry, I, I know how important it is to to have strong links with uh, the, the industry, the food industry. So we have um, food uh, partners uh, like Terena, Neovia, and other um, smaller companies uh, in the area. We have actually many uh, food companies here in the west part of yeah. France. It's the first industry, so we are just in the middle of the ecosystem. So uh, in this master, we have uh, speakers coming from the industry um, uh, on top of the, the research uh, teachers um, teaching in the in the program. So and we also visit. Um, uh, food exhibitions uh, both in France but also in Brazil. So we have a, a very similar um, content um, and approach here in France and, and compared to Brazil. Um, so it's an 18 month program um, and, and um, students will spend from four to six months um, in internship, uh, doing an internship um wherever they want um in the food and agri uh, business sector and at the end of the of the program they will have to uh, defend uh, um, a dissertation uh, professional tips indeed really amazing program for networking isn't it yes uh networking is very important to us it's not just um delivering uh, the academic knowledge, but it's also practical knowledge and uh, you will meet uh, with uh, many experts from the industry, again in France, but also in Brazil. So uh, it's, um, it's a small community in Odensia community, I guess, and 
and uh, we have strong links also with the alumni from the the FAM program. And um, I guess it's it's yeah. good. It's it's very positive um, as well. Yeah. So don't be shy. If you have any questions about the program, the program director is here to answer the questions. So please do send them in. I'm going to move on swiftly with the rest of the information on some of our other programs and maybe we can get to your questions then uh, rapidly. The Creative Economy program, the Management Entrepreneurship in the Creative Economy, is for anyone that might have an artistic background. So whether you're a professional musician or whether you work in the film industry or whether you are an architect, um, this program allows you to acquire skills in management um, in order to be able to make your kind of creative skills uh, a, a, a profitable venture, uh, basically. So again, um, feel free to shout out if you have any questions. The full-time MBA program is for those that have at least three years of full-time work experience. So it's, it's for those that are going back to studying and would like to kind of formalize some of the things they might be doing already in the business world, but to have the, the degree and, and the structure and theory behind it that allow you perhaps to apply for the more executive management roles within your organization or create your own business. Um, you know, that's some of the things we see our um, full-time MBA alumni uh, doing. Uh, tuition fee varies depending on the program you're looking to apply for. Um, the core programs are open to those that have already uh, four years of higher education, so a four-year bachelor degree. Um, you can enter it directly into the core program, which is 18 months in length. We have scholarships available depending on the program. For the food and agribusiness management, for example, we have a, a, a scholarship that will cover 25% of your tuition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a food for thought scholarship. And it entails uh, you to send in a, a, a business proposal or business plan uh, for innovation within the food and agribusiness management, uh, food and agribusiness industry. So whether it's within your current company, you're working in in the food uh, industry, you're working in a company, you'd like, you see a way to innovate within your company, or you'd like to create your own business. You have a business idea, an entrepreneurial idea, and you'd like to present it to us. In any way, you need to showcase what is innovative about the idea. We need to clearly understand the innovation you're presenting, because that's something we like to uh, nurture here on campus, and we'd like to kind of see uh, what your innovative skills are already at this stage. So with that submission, that could cover up to 25% of your tuition. Uh, admissions to Master of Science programs like the Food and Agribusiness uh, program entails a four-year bachelor degree and proficiency in English. If you haven't studied through the English language, you need to present a TOEFL, TOEIC, or IELTS. Um, and if you don't have a four-year bachelor degree, if you only have a three-year bachelor degree, you need to do a one-year uh, general management program, which we call the pre-MSC, before entering into your MSC program. MSc program is September to June of classes and about four to six months of internships there. And that internship can be done anywhere across the globe. And our careers team is there to support you and help you find the best internship for you. I'll move on swiftly to our application process. Very simple, three steps. Number one, you apply online at apply.com. You upload your CV, your cover letter, your transcripts uh, from your degrees and uh, a photo ID, like a passport ID. That's the bare minimum we need to evaluate your application. Then swiftly after, you'll have a Skype interview uh, where we'd be evaluating your motivation and also testing your English. Um, and a week in, uh, in the latest after that Skype interview, you'll have your final admissions decision. So all this can be done in, in, in about a week, uh, a week, a week and a half. You could have the whole process finished in total. Um, so yes, send in your application. Your application is already open for September 2019. Um, so at this stage, we're encouraging you to apply as soon as possible because we work on a role in admissions basis. So every week we have interviews and every week we're giving out admission results. Um, so yes, you want to get it in before the program is full and we're closing admissions. So that's it for the presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, for for your attention and feel free to send us an email at internationaladodensia.com uh, at any stage after this webinar. But perhaps we can open the floor up to the questions now and we can answer some of your questions here live. 
Yes, for sure. Uh, thank you, Yombo. Thank you, Dr. Corrine. Uh, it's been very interesting to hear uh, both of you. And we do have a lot of questions. Um, I would like to start with uh, Vincent's question. Um, do you have any uh, distance learning uh, courses? Thank you very much for the question. No, we only have full-time programs at master's level. So no distance learning available at Odensia. However, a math of science program is only nine months of academics. And it means that you can quickly be back out of the workforce rapidly. So your four to six month internship can be done back home where you're from, can be done here in Europe, um, can be done anywhere across the globe and, and allow you to be back in the workforce rapidly. So yeah, you need that nine months uh, here with us in, in, in classes um, for our program. Okay, great, thank you. And I take this opportunity that you guys are seeing the contact us uh, slide. Uh, but I remind you all, uh, remind all of you that um, on Monday, uh, Tuesday maximum, you will receive uh, an email with all these details. So don't rush to write them down or uh, make a screenshot because you receive everything uh, in the follow up email. Okay, guys. So um, let's go to the next question, which is Michelle. Any program recommended for someone interested in information systems? Um, no, we have nothing dedicated to information systems, uh, unfortunately. Um, within the Master and Management program, um, we'd have kind of a specialization in kind of um, data analytics, but nothing as specialized as a, as a degree in information systems. Mm. Okay. Uh, Fabian wrote that he is interested in the program of international business. So we, if we could give him more details. Yeah, international math and management program um, is a, an 18 month program. So you start with your core uh, courses. So you have courses in uh, corporate finance, in marketing, in human resource management, in management, kind of the fundamentals within the first semester. Is mandatory for everybody and then in the second semester you'll be able to go into the either electives so forge kind of your um, your curriculum from there or uh, concentrate on a dedicated specialization a specialization in finance uh, a number of specializations in marketing and, and in, in in general management such as innovation development um, for example or consulting can also is also one of the specializations we have um, and then you finish up with a, a full six of internship and a dissertation degree. The program, you know, is the International Master Manager program, as its name says, is, is really that focus on, on, on an international perspective. So on the program, it's one of our most diverse programs, and it's also the opportunity to study with, like a lot of our programs, uh, but, but this one is, 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 uh, is one of the bigger programs on campus, so the, the scale is even, bigger in terms of the number of nationalities you're going to meet um, and like a lot of programs on campus this program also is very much focused on um, project-based learning so you have a lot of uh, case studies and you've been groups of four or five with people from different academic and, and cultural backgrounds and that's also part of the learning environment um, and, and prepares you for that uh, real world situation of working in international corporations. The main objective of the program, a generalist management program with the opportunity to specialize in your second semester on a specific aspect of management. So I hope that replies to the question, but perhaps, yeah, feel free if there's anything uh, that I didn't cover and any other details you'd like to have. Yes, I do see here there's a question about the bachelor's requirement for international business. Yes, so at the moment, only our master's programs are open to international admissions. Um, the bachelor program um, doesn't have an international admissions process running. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Yombo. The, our participant that's interested in international business, he is wondering what is the bachelor's degree that he needs to have to be able ah. to apply. Yes, very good question. We welcome uh, people from all ways. So there isn't a strict requirement there for the International Master Management Program. Um, so no matter what your degree is, um, 
you know, the program is tailor made to allow you to acquire the fundamentals before moving on to a specialization. And our, our professors um, um, are able to juggle with that mixity. And it's something we encourage on campus. Um, you know, here on campus, we pride ourselves on having uh, architects and engineers and language learners in the same classroom because we believe that's how innovative ideas are generated and, and, and that's where they stem from. So no specific requirement in terms of uh, your degree of origin. Um, it just needs to be a bachelor degree. And if it's a four year degree, then you'd be going into the core program. And if it's a three year degree, you have to do the extended version. Okay. Uh, Dr. Corrine, for the food and agribusiness, are there internships of opportunities? Yes, of course. Um, students have to run uh, at the end of uh, the program. They have to run uh, from uh, four to six month internship uh, in any organization, um, a private or public organization, company, um, NGOs, um, in services or in the industry. It doesn't matter as long as it, it, it is in the food. It is related to food and agriculture. And, and the same at any position um within the company um management but also technical uh, this year we have a, a student a food engineer a student uh, she um so she acquired all the knowledge in management uh but she she it seems she will uh, do a, her internship in in quality uh so she she already found her her internship actually so it's it's quite easy to find an internship in the industry um when you're following the, the this program it's it's uh, quite well accepted by by the industry so um yes okay do you have specific partnerships with uh, for the yeah well uh we have um a department here in Odensia um that um gathers all the uh, internship offers from the industry uh overall and also in the farm program, we have um, um, partnerships with um, uh, two main uh, companies, uh, which is uh, Terena and Neovia. So big, big uh, cooperative and, and, and companies in France and, and, and globally speaking as well. So uh, they currently offer uh, internship. Uh, for this, this year, we have two Chinese uh, uh, working uh, or fun, they found an internship with uh, one of our partners, for instance. So, yeah, our partners we offer um, internship, um, and uh, and on top of that, we have this uh, office uh, internship uh, uh, department uh, yeah. that will um, offer also internship to uh, students. Yeah. So, so if the internship is mandatory, does that mean that they don't have to write a thesis? Yes, it's, the, the internship is mandatory, plus they have to um, defend a thesis at the end of the program, like in uh, December, beginning of December, they have to uh, to defend a thesis. So okay. the, um, it has to, to be related or to, to be linked to the internship. Um, uh, okay, in so they are linked. Yes, they are linked. Um, yes. Okay. This can be started in advance. They don't have to wait the very last semester to start this thesis. They can start from um, semester one. And the last semester is kind of the deadline. At the end of the last semester is the deadline to submit the thesis and defend. OK. And uh, uh, um, Calvin is asking about funding opportunities for this program in food and agribusiness. Yes, indeed. So, um, you know, as mentioned during the presentation, we have the Food for Thought Scholarship. So that's uh, key, and we highly recommend that anyone interested in the program does submit their um, kind of proposal for that Food for Thought Scholarship, and we'd be happy to consider it. And then secondly, in addition to that, you can gain a scholarship from a number of external uh, scholarship uh, given uh, institutions, such as Campus France. Campus France is an entity within the French uh, um, embassy and the French Institute across the globe. And they often offer scholarships for internationals looking to study in France. So whether you're a resident, just uh, search online for your local campus France office 
and um, they will be able to let you know whether there are any scholarships running. Uh, and you'd only be competing against other people of that country to study in France. It's a smaller pool, and we highly recommend you inquire about scholarship opportunities with them. And depending on where you're from, we also have other scholarship partners. So um, they send us an email, and be happy to give you that information too. For example, in, in Colombia, we work with uh, an institution called Futuro. Uh, in, in, in Mexico, we work with Banco de Mexico for uh, a very um, advantageous uh, loan system. So there are a number of institutions we work with across the globe. So yeah, feel free to send us an email. Okay. Um, Francesco is ex asking, what is the cost of living in Nantes? Uh, can you give us uh, um, more or less an amount, Yombo? And also, I'll take this opportunity to ask about the cost of living in Sao Paulo, since the food and agribusiness uh, program is also um, set up there. Yes. So I'll talk about Nantes, and perhaps Karim will have an idea about Sao Paulo. Um, not um, in terms of rent in Nantes, so we're talking in euros and, um, and for a month, you're looking about... Uh, 350 to 600 euros for rent. So 360 if you want to uh, live in a student residence uh, with just a, a room and maybe a shared kitchen, or, you know, uh, on a student residence, that's about 350. And if you're looking more for private housing, your own studio, you're looking at 600 or more. Um, so that's the scale. For food, depending on how you, uh, you, you know, you eat and whether you cook for yourself or not, but on average, um, you know, you're looking about 160 euros per, per month for food if, if you're not eating out uh, too much. And uh, for transport in France, in here in Nantes specifically, it's about 30 euros a month for students. And that will get you all around the city of Nantes. Um, so that'd be all you'd need uh, for transport. That gives you a general idea. Um, I can also give more details on, on expenses. If you want to send me an email, I, I have a, a long a uh, list of other estimations that I could provide. Would you have an idea for Sao Paulo? Yes, well, um, it's similar cost uh, in Sao Paulo compared <coughs> to not. Uh, what students uh, do uh, regarding the accommodation in Sao Paulo, they just rent a flat for a few of them and uh, it's, all, it's less expensive and it's, it's more fun, I guess, for them. So that's what they do, and um, I guess it's, it's not so expensive at the end. Uh, also, they try to find accommodations uh, right uh, near the, the campus. Uh, the campus is in uh, the Libertad uh, area, you know, Avenue, so it, it's in a very uh, uh, safe and, and nice area. And it's, it's quite easy to find uh, accommodations, mm. and uh, it's... Uh, um, yeah, they may, they may find a whole uh, apartment for, for a few of them, uh, four or five of them, and it, at the end it's not so expensive. That's what I heard. Yes, it's three months in South Paulo, isn't it? March to May? Yes, uh, beginning of March until uh, middle of May um, in Sao Paulo. Uh, so, um, uh, and then right after May, uh, they start their internship uh, until December. Yes. So you go from Nantes to Sao Paulo, and then from Sao Paulo you can choose where you'd like to be for the internship. Yeah, absolutely. So you may stay in Brazil even, and yeah. some uh, find an internship in uh, in Brazil. Uh, yeah. Usually, yeah. students love uh, Brazil, so yeah. they don't want to go back home. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, it's it's really open um, for internship. Uh, and I, I wanted to add something about uh, financing uh, their studies. Actually, uh, we, we do accept that students um, find a job right after um, uh, Brazil, uh, and, and we may consider this as an internship. Um, so it's, to me, it's a professional experience, whatever the format. Yeah. If it's a job or, um, or an internship, um, yeah. as long as they, they, do, uh, they, they do have a, a, professional, a new professional experience, um, yeah. I'm okay with that. And they could be paid uh, at a higher level if they find uh, a job, obviously. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we have another question about the requirements, Yombo. If mm -hmm. they have to uh, present an English certificate to apply. 
Yes, so um, it depends. If you studied uh, through the English language in your uh, undergraduate degree, no. So if you studied in, you know, in the US, or the UK, or any other English speaking countries, or your degree was taught through English, wherever you are, uh, you wouldn't need an English test. If you're a native speaker, obviously you wouldn't need an English test. Um, if English is, is the first language uh, for your country of origin. Um, apart from those two exceptions, you would need the TOEFL, TOEIC, or IELTS, either, either, either one of those three uh, tests. And uh, I often uh, get the question of what is the minimum required? It depends on your profile. Uh, so we don't just say, well, you have this level of people, you get in. Um, you know, it's, it's basically we're looking at the overall candidate, so we're looking at your academics. We're looking at the experience you have. Perhaps you've lived abroad the year after the test, and um, it's not you know very representative of your level right now. We're also going to test your level during the interview. That's what the interview is there for. So we're also yeah we're looking at your academics, your experience professionally uh, or not uh, within English speaking countries. Um, so there are a lot of things that goes into account when uh, we. Uh, calculating admissions and the English test is only one of them so I can't really give a strict minimum um, because also someone might have a great uh, level for some reason in the test and really badly in the interview and, and, and can't, can't understand the question then we'll have to review that again so there's no there's no real cutoff point it really depends on the overall um, profile and the overall uh, candidate Okay, great. Um, Yombo, let's clear something up. Um, it appears that uh, we have mentioned that uh, admissions is on a rolling basis, but then uh, we also mentioned about a deadline of January 31st. So if we could please clarify this. Yes, indeed. So, um, no, January 31st is the early application deadline. So, um, you know, there you know, we try and have as many of our, our candidates apply before that deadline, but doesn't mean that we've closed admissions. Admissions are still running uh, until the program is full. Uh, so don't, don't be afraid, you can still apply. Um, and um, admissions will probably stay open up until the end of uh, May in general. Uh, but it really depends if next week we have, you know, applicants uh, for the FAM program, we might have to close it up. Um, but, um, but in general, ad admissions stay open until the class is full. The FAM program actually welcomes um, about 30 students per year, uh, a class of 30. You'd never be in a group of more than 30 at, at, a, at a time in, in, here on campus. So yes, no, but that was the early application deadline. Um, but but admissions are still open. Okay, and how to prepare for the interview? What do you recommend? Is, <coughs> is there a test specific for the programs? Is it a more a conversation? How does that work? It's very much a conversation. It's your opportunity to uh, present your profile, present yourself, anything that might be written down already. Uh, you know, let us know why you apply for the program. What your career objectives are um, and why this program will play a part um, that's what we're looking for we're looking for your motivation for the program and a fit we want to make sure that you're going into something that is good for you and that is uh, clearly linked to your career objectives um, it's really is for you to, to make sure that you be happy on the program so just to make sure there's a fit there um, so what to prepare, I'd say, you know, uh, if you already applied for the program, you know why you've applied and you know what your career objectives are. So you just want to make sure you can clearly explain that in the interview. That's all really. Okay. We have a question to answer. Uh, she is interested in management uh, engineering and she has asked, uh, do I need to have a certain amount of work experience or can I apply as a fresher? All our programs are open to freshers. The only program that would require work experience is the full-time MBA program, which requires mandatory three years of full-time work experience. 
Uh, however, any work experience you've had in any of the other programs is going to be an advantage. It's going to be extra points in the admissions process, and um, you know your your your. It's going to add to your profile and give you extra points and help you secure admissions uh, slightly more uh, quickly. But um, it's not mandatory. It's not something that will be uh, a cutoff point for you uh, on any of our programs apart from the post MBA program. Do you, do you also consider, I see here a comment, do you also consider volunteering exchanges? Uh, indeed, indeed, yes. yes. Maybe you want to add on that? Yeah, anyway, any, any kind of experience is, is very valuable for us, uh, either professional or volunteering or whatever. Uh, the more you've done, uh, the better. And, and during the program, the more they do, the more they will do, uh, the better to me. So we ask uh, them uh, a lot, we require a lot. Uh, it's just because we want our students to uh, take uh, the maximum out of it. So, um, so uh, we, we have like 20 modules of 24 hours during the year and, um, and they, it's an opportunity for them to do many, many things, to meet many, many people um, during class, but also during the company visits, like we do, um, uh, almost 15 company visits during um, this um, yeah. nine months, both in France uh, and in Brazil. So uh, yes, any any experience uh, of any kind is, is always a welcome and is always a plus uh, when you apply. And also during the, the whole uh, program, uh, we, we try to, to provide any experience and, and encourage our students to um, to gain experience. Yes, indeed. Well, NCA is a dedicated business school, so we're very much linked to uh, industry. Um, and everything you do on campus is going to really mirror the real world business environment. So you're not totally disconnected from the work and reality. Uh, on the contrary, you're uh, continuously uh, interacting with professionals, the business professionals, and you're continuously networking so that by the time you finish the program, you, most of our students are already secure an internship even before the um, end of the program. Yeah, uh, if I may, um, almost half of the, the courses uh, include uh, a true company uh, project. Uh, so our partners, our uh, companies, uh, partners, um, just come to us and uh, every year asking us or suggesting uh, to our students to work on specific problems. Uh, um, this year we had uh, one uh, digital uh, project for uh, Neovia, we have another one for um, Terena um, on, on supply chain, um, we have another one on uh, anthropology of food. So, um, yeah, it's a very applied um, program. Uh, yes. the, the program. Okay. Right. okay, I hope this satisfies our participants. But still, uh, one of our participants would like to know more about the, uh, the partnerships of uh, food and agribusiness programs with big corporations. So if you could name, Dr. Kareen, some of the uh, main companies uh, with which you have uh, this constant interaction for your students. Yes, so we have two official uh, food uh, partners uh, in the program. They participate to the uh, program committee every year and they also participate to the diplomation uh, committee. And those two companies are Terena, uh, T E R R E N A. It's a big uh, uh, cooperative in France, uh, located at one, one hour driving from Nantes. And the other partner uh, is uh, Neovia, N-E-O-B-I-A, um, a, a huge company uh, in the agro-food business, also a French, French company with uh, facilities all over the world. Um, the other um, uh, companies we work with, or uh, we, we visit, for instance, are um, Allmix. Uh, it's a company specialized in algae extract uh, to substitute to um, uh, anti antibiotics uh, in the, the, the feed, uh, feed industry. Um, we also have a connection with Diana, 
Diana Pet Food. We also have connections with uh, Tribala, a dairy, a dairy company uh, in uh, Rennes, one hour from here. We also have connections, uh, connections with uh, Dossi, the Dossi brand in uh, canned uh, vegetables. Um, we also have uh, connections with um, Bretagne Commerce International. It's a, 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 a Britain organizations, um, organization um, 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 helping um, food companies exporting uh, internationally. Um, and in Brazil, we have partnership with uh, the ABAG uh, Association, uh, Food and Agribusiness Association, and they also visit uh, an espresso factory and a coffee factory. And yes, we, we have we have many uh, many opportunities to, to meet um, companies and uh, company experts. Also, thanks to my network, as I said before, I worked for the food industry um, for about 20 years, so I still have uh, some network and um, I'm, I'm putting it at the disposal of our students. Great. Um, Dr. Corinne, uh, we have also um, an interested participant in the... Uh, okay, so how many students are accepted for the food and agribusiness program? Well, um, officially 30 students, uh, but uh, I, I will say uh, that uh, I like to have uh, 20, 25, 30 is already uh, too many, but um, I guess 20, 25 is the right number. And for exceptional uh, students and a very, uh, very good um, candidates, we may go up to 30 students. Um, okay. And 30 for me it's it's too many because as I said uh, we want to visit companies we, we, we mm -hmm. do visions and if we want to continue doing that we cannot be yes of course it's just impossible so uh, it's a rather small group and I prefer this way uh, because then there is also there are more exchanges more interaction um, during classes and outside classes as well Okay, and the same question, Yombo, for the Master in International Business and for the MBA. Um, how many students are accepted for each, um, for each intake? So the International Master in Management program um, welcomes about three groups of 30. Okay. Um, so in any case, you'd never be in any bigger than three, you know, a, a class of 30. And uh, we, we often open about three groups of those for the International Master Management Program. The European and International Business Management Program, the trilingual program, uh, uh, we only open up a class for that. Uh, often we also recruit quite a small number for that. So we're, we're looking about 20 students for the European and International Business Management Program. The full time MBA program is uh, a group of 30. Okay. okay. For the MBA? Uh, yes. Okay, so 30. Yes. Our participants. Don't worry. Even <laughs> if even if we, we got uh, you know a huge amount of, of applications, you'd never be in uh, in any bigger than a group of 30. Um, that is also what we offer here on campus. Okay. Um, Dr. Corinne, um, what is, what subject do you teach and can you list some of the subjects for the food and agribusiness program? So you mean what different uh, disciplines? Yes, exactly, disciplines. So we cover actually the main disciplines of the management. Uh, so um, the first semester is about marketing. So I personally teach the 24 hours in food uh, and agri-food marketing. We also have uh, um, a module of uh, methodology of business plan. So uh, at the beginning of the, 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 the course, we ask students to come up with an innovative idea of a product or service that does not exist. And they will start building the business plan uh, during the full year. And they will submit it and defend it uh, in front of me, myself, for the marketing part and in front of my colleague from finance. For the financial part so this is one, um, one module we have another module of food innovation so during again uh, like six months um, uh, students work on true uh, innovation uh, project uh, I, mean, I mean companies like three four companies in the area 
uh, give us um, um, a, a product to develop, to develop or they, they ask students to, to innovate uh, in a way or another around uh, their, their, their product range. Um, another module is about finance. To me, uh, finance is, is, is very important. We cannot be we can't be a good marketer or a good manager if we don't uh, know a little bit of um, uh, finance. Um, uh, another another module is about um, supply chain uh, operations management. So, um, we also have uh, anthropology of food. We also have value chain and performance module. We also have Portuguese uh, class, uh, the second semester before leaving to uh, Brazil. Um, I, I guess uh, we also have yeah, uh, managerial coach coaching uh, module. We have also 24 hours on digital management. So during this uh, module, uh, students will um, be in charge of um, uh, digital and uh, e-communication e e about the, the program. They will learn how to, to communicate on, on social media and, and to uh, bring uh, good content uh, through uh, social media. So um, I, I would say we cover all the main uh, disciplines uh, in management, always applied to agribusiness and, and food. Uh, all the exercises, all the case studies, all the projects are related to food. Okay, interesting. And can we rewind to the MBA, Yombo? Because we have Manuel asking, when does the MBA start? When does it start? Um, all our programs have a September intake, so they'll all start in September. The supply chain and purchase management also has a February intake. But yes, September for the MBA and September for most of the programs, yeah. Okay. Ahmed, uh, kindly explain the dynamics of management engineering program in terms of its industrial potential when it comes to planning mega projects, especially those within the South Asian, South Asian region. Okay, this is a tricky one. <laughs> yeah, very specific question. <laughs> Feel free to send us in an email and we need to also continue that conversation. Um, but I guess the, the management engineering program, the objective is really to kind of step back from the, your, your technical engineering roles and to acquire skills. You're looking at, we're not an engineering school, we're a business school that welcomes engineers basically. And that program is dedicated to our engineers on campus. Um, but you're looking at subjects such as um, finance, you're looking at accounting, you're looking at marketing and communication, um, you know, you, you're, you're, you're looking at um, theories linked to innovation management, uh, you're looking at supply chain, you're looking at the business aspects um, within any industry, uh, including the, the, you know, engineering companies. Um, for example, here on campus, we have um, Airbus that has its main headquarters here in the city of Nantes and um, Airbus has many engineers but they also have many um, um, professionals that are competent in um, business and in management and they also need those skills. So the program, the engineer management program allows you to develop that dual competency and um, our engineer managers are very much demanded uh, because they can both liaise with the technical engineering teams as well as uh, reflect on the business development and executive management and where the company is going next. So that's that's the that's the objective of the program as a whole. And we are welcome engineers from all fields of engineering into this one classroom because it allows you to kind of pick up where you left off. So you're not in a class with other people that have already done business and you're not gonna feel lost. Um, the, the program is tailor-made for those from the engineering backgrounds looking to acquire this dual competency. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Yombo. Um, have... Sorry, go ahead. Yes, I'm talking about engineering. We also have a, um, um, a lot of engineers within the food and agribusiness um, program too. 
Yes, and it's it's uh, it's one of the the, the big uh, plus of this program is uh, the diversity I mentioned uh, at the beginning uh, during the introduction of the program. Uh, diversity in backgrounds uh, and uh, academic backgrounds. So uh, we have uh, students from social sciences from business also. Um, uh, uh, together with uh, uh, students uh, from uh, school uh, engineering schools, food engineering school, food and agriculture. Um, and I, I strongly believe in um, the exchange of knowledge uh, between uh, these, uh, these uh, students and they learn from each other. Uh, business students learn about nutrition from the food uh, engineers. And the food engineers uh, acquire or uh, are helped by the business students regarding finance or marketing. Or so I, uh, it's not only a, a one one way uh, teacher to students, but it's also students students uh, knowledge uh, exchange, and it's it's very rich. And uh, I love that. Really, I love that. Uh, the, the presence of the food engineers. So, if we have food engineers online, I, uh, I just encourage you to um, to look at this program because it's uh, it's, it's a very uh, very nice program uh, for you. Okay, food engineers, let us know if you're out there. Um, for all of those who are uh, messaging me uh, with your background, I see here human resources, health management, administration. Um, Yombo has, um, has welcomed all of your uh, degrees. This is not going to be an issue, but I do invite you all to uh, contact uh, Odensia directly. Yes, I believe also lawyers. Yes. Okay, lawyers also. Um, I do invite you all to write an email to Odensia, um, write a couple of lines about what you have studied, what are you interested in, so that they can tell you um, if you're eligible. Um, so please get in touch with them if you still have questions about this. Um, I remind all of you that uh, you're going to receive an email with these contacts and uh, everything that you need to know to apply to Audencia. Um, I leave uh, these couple of last minutes to our speakers for their final words. Yes, so yes, thank you again for participating. And yes, my, my final word is, no matter what your background is, we have a program here um, at Audencia Business School for you, if you are interested in business and management. The specialization of our school is to be able to mix people from multiple disciplines in the one area uh, on the one campus and allow you to kind of uh, work together with businesses uh, here in France and across the globe that are looking for your expertise and looking for your innovative ideas and you know that's that's what we offer here on campus so no matter what your background is Audencia allows you to acquire a master's degree in management in business and allows you to network during your program with industry professionals. I think that'd be my final word. Yes, and um, I can only encourage uh, candidates to go on social media and follow our uh, Audencia firm and yeah. other programs because our students uh, do uh, have their own uh, social media. And so um, I just encourage you to, to go there and, and follow them and follow us online and you will be uh, you will know more about uh, what we, we do during class and outside class also sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much anyway. Thank you uh, to our speakers, Yombo Rahman and uh, Dr. Corinne Lamour. Um, thank you to our um, participants for joining us this afternoon or this evening, wherever they are. They were a very diverse group all over the world. It's been a pleasure to have you all here. I hope to see you very soon in the next webinar and I wish you a good weekend. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.